Are a lot of young people coming up that are really spectacular? They're having a very hard time because of streaming not paying us for records. So it makes it much harder for people trying to come up. But there are some incredibly terrible people. And who influenced you in your craft? Mm, all the people you'd think, you know, Jody Mitchell, really a lot. Hello. Uh, Go in the right place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and yourself for the camera. Uh, uh, he's a hero. Pro, uh, he's just a wonderful quality guy and, and an incredible writer and musician. Uh, Steely Dan. Donald. I really love that. I love his writing. I love his writing. I love his music. Um, some jazz people. Uh, Miles. Strange story. And this life, there are very few people can just hold the camera. Uh, also, my dad's a big sailor, and he wants to know what's happened to your sailboat. I had to sell it. Uh, I had to sell it because, uh, see, streaming doesn't pay us. They claim that they pay us, but they really don't. It's as if you work for about three weeks and they give you a nickel. It's like that. So, I, I cut my income in half, and I couldn't keep the boat up, and I can't watch it go to pieces, because I love it. And uh, who are you looking forward to collaborating with? Coming up. Who would like your ideal? I've got two bands that are really stunning. Right? The electric band with my son and, and those guys. Are this acoustic band with Michael and Rebecca and Michelle. And now the documentary. I don't know. It's just a way to kind of. There are people that I like, you know, uh, that I. I the best storytellers making. Probably I've worked with most of the people I really like to work with. I get. To, I've gotten to sing with just about everybody at one time or another. And how was it making it? Was that fun to reminisce? It's easy. I didn't have to make it. They did it. They just ask me questions and I try to answer them honestly. That's all. Awesome. Well, congrats and enjoy this today. Thank you. David, David, you've lived a long time, and I wondered if you want to give any message of hope to young people today about how you survived through dark years, such as the were in the end of the 60s and today. This well, is the elder talking to the young. Yeah, that's pretty hard to do on, uh, extemporaneously. Uh, you know, it's hard to give kids hope right now, man. You understand? The way they feel, the kids that I know, is that we're handing them a broken democracy in a, in a world that's really seriously screwed up. So they're not happy. All the kids I know are pissed off. They all feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. And they are. And so that's kind of my thing with them. I try to say, you know, we're, we're working at it as hard as we can. But it is the way you see it. You, you're not mistaken. That's the world that's what's the role of, perceiving what's the, role the world correctly. Music? What's the role of music then? It's very uh, tough. It's very tough. The streaming is a very bad thing. They don't pay us. So that makes it really hard for young kids. They don't get paid for their records. And the only time they make any money off a record is if they sell at their show. So that's really hard for young people coming up. What's your definition of family? Family? Well, when two people love each other, they get very close, and sometimes a baby happens. Uh, <laughs> come on, man. You're ask a hippie, a, come on. Yeah, ask me a serious question. Anybody else? Yeah, I would like to know. Do you see similarities between the conditions today for our youth and back when you were really rocking? Uh, yes. Both times we had bad governments and we were in, in opposition to them. Now we've got probably, this is even worse, because this guy's like a baby. He's like an eight-year-old that broke into his dad's office and he's pissing on all the papers because they never let him in there before. You know, he's like that. He's really a pain in the butt, and he's doing a lot of harm. So I think it's worse now than it was in the 60s and 70s, and it was bad. Nixon was not a peach, but this guy's worse. My apartment. I noticed it uh, uh, about your documentary that it's about how your life, in one sense of music, was in full, you know, was in full swing, but that your personal life and the other elements were out of sync with that success. Yeah. And that seems to be what the crux of the documentary. Could you elaborate on that just a little bit for us? What threw me for a loop, mammoth drugs, hard drugs. Absolutely a bad idea. Uh, and they pretty much destroyed my life. Uh, and they certainly got in the way of the music. Uh, hard drugs don't do anything for you at all. 
They bring nothing to the party except trouble. So, uh, you know, that was a serious distraction and wound up with me going to prison. But that got me off of it. And then I went back to work. And that's been a while now. It's been about 30 years, something like that, since then. And I've been... The last five years, it's really pretty much caught fire. Since I quit CSN, I've been having a blast. I've been making uh, some of the best music of my life, mostly with younger people who are, like, still thrilled with it and not jaded, and they really love it, you know. So it's exciting for them. That's really a joy, man, to work with. It's really good. Thank you so much. Welcome.